Hi, this is Cynthia Germanotta, and welcome to Tea with Mrs. G. I am so excited to connect with six incredible young people today. Each one is here for such unique and special reasons, and I can't wait to hear them share their stories with our community. These young people give us hope, and it's truly amazing to see the creativity and the resilience that's demonstrated in their stories as they find their purpose in life. So good morning to our panelists or good afternoon to our panelists, wherever you may be. I'm sending you a heart. And I really, I really hope that you're all doing well at this time. I hope you're personally well, your families, your friends and your colleagues. I know these have been very, very challenging times and we so appreciate you being here today to share your stories with us. Um, I'm especially excited um, to hear this conversation because it's a great opportunity to hear from us about the world from your perspective, to hear it from your eyes and from your heart. And so together we can continue to build this kinder and braver world together. Um, our work at Born This Way is always centered around uplifting the voice of young people. That was something that was very important to myself and from my daughter from the be beginning. Um, we are so proud of you and the work that you're doing and we're so proud also of other young people that have participated in these conversations in the past with us. Um, I know and we know that the future is really bright with young people today, the resilience that you're showing, the creativity that you're showing. And I know that that light will be shining through as we hear your stories today. So uh, I'm excited today to speak with Hannah and Charlie Lucas, uh, founders of the Not OK app, Allison Kurtz, an LGBTQ plus youth advocate, Angela Jang, founder of Artvocacy, Micah Carlos, an advocate for mental health in the Native American youth community, and Max Keeping, a youth advocate from New York City. Each of our guests has an incredibly amazing story and has created a real difference within their communities. At the base of any change maker is a consistent and really unbreakable inspiration. And what I can't wait to hear is what that inspiration was for each and every one of you. And so, that, and I'm really just hoping that anybody tuning in can, that wants to be inspired or that already is feeling inspired can learn about ways to really change their communities for the better. So I'd like to open that conversation now, um, first just by asking each panelist to briefly, briefly introduce themselves um, and share their pronouns. So let's start with um, Hannah and Charlie. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah, my pronouns are she, her. Um, hi, my name's Charlie, my pronouns are he, him. And we are the creators and founders of the Not Okay app. So the Not Okay app is essentially a digital panic button that when pressed, it sends a text message to your pre-selected up to five closest contacts with the text message that says, hey, I'm not okay. Please call, text, or come check up on me along with their current GPS location and directions. And so far, we have over 100,000 downloads, and um, Not OK is one of the top 25 mental health apps of 2020. So we're really excited to be here. Thank you guys for having us in this great conversation. Amazing. Thank you. Allison. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, hi, I'm Allison. Uh, I'm a representative for Children's Miracle Network and have been since I was younger. Uh, and I work mainly in the fields of mental health and LGBT youth, uh, because coming from a background of being LGBT, I know uh, how it feels to be in that kind of position. And I want to do everything in my power to keep people from in the future from needing to go through what I had to go through. Thank you. Hi, my name is Max. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a rising senior at Lamar Manhattan. And uh, I help to lead a volunteer program within the school to help uh, with fundraising for a summer scholarship. Um, and I'm very honored to be here and I'm so excited for this conversation. 
Hi everyone, my name is Angela Zhang. I am a 16 year old artivist from Los Angeles uh, and I currently serve as the co-chair for the International Teen Advisory Board of Girl Up, which is a United Nations Foundation initiative aiming to support gender equality. Uh, and as Ms. G very <laughs> thankfully mentioned, I am also the founder and director of Art Advocacy, where art meets advocacy and that is something I'll be talking a little bit more about today. Um, in the mental health round, in the mental health realm, I volunteer for the Teen Talk app, a safe space for teens to connect with trained teens um, on discussing issues that primarily affect their mental health. Um, and I hope to use my voice in helping others find theirs in my work that surrounds creative advocacy and destigmatization. Um, and ultimately, I do hope to build community by sharing the stories that are very overlooked by media. Good day, everybody. My name is Micah Carlos. I come from the Salt River P. Maricopa Indian community in Arizona. I currently sit on the Center for Native American Youth Youth Advisory Board, where I'm chair. And our focus is making a better life for Indigenous youth in um, Native communities. And we really do that through empowerment and focusing on a couple of different areas. My focus is cultural revitalization and substance abuse prevention, as well as mental health resource access. Thank you all very much. What, what an impressive roster of, of accomplishments and purpose um, at such a young, young age. Um, so let's begin with our questions. My first uh, two questions are for Hannah and Allison, and I will ask you a one and then a follow-up question. Um, so to both of you, Hannah and Allison, uh, growing up, you both faced serious medical conditions that threatened you know, not only your physical health, but also your mental health as well. Uh, can you please share and speak to maybe how that experience uh, affected you, what it taught you, uh, and how it may have served as the inspiration that you're for the work that you're actually doing today? Um, my, the things I went through because of my illnesses absolutely inspire everything I do. Uh, I have polycystic kidney disease for one, but then uh, more importantly, I've had to deal with depression and anxiety my whole life. And also transitioning uh, was a big issue. Uh, and it's a very trying thing to go through. So I went through that and it was the worst. <laughs> I, With the help of uh, CMN, it was easier than it could have been, but it was still incredibly hard. And there were days I didn't think I could get through it. And that was the tinder of, that the spark lit was just the feeling of hopelessness and like nobody knows what this is and nobody's talking about it. And so I decided that even though I am terrified of the spotlight, I want to talk as much as I can about this issue so that people in the future don't have to go through what I had to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, and nobody stopped me from talking yet. <laughs> So Allison, you you didn't want to feel that way, is what you're saying, and oh, that absolutely. that was that alone was an inspiration for you to yeah. to find a path. Because uh, in the trans clinic at Cincinnati Children's, uh, they often have support groups, and so I'd be surrounded by other kids my age, and I'd look around and I'd think all of these people need support that they haven't been able to get, and we all feel the same way. We all feel in this pit, uh, and that was just. I was like, I'm going to talk until someone makes me stop about this. <laughs> I'm, you know, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you finish. Oh, I was just saying, um, I'm incredibly passionate about making sure that things are going to be easier for the next generation uh, and making sure that the current generation and the generations above us understand what they're getting into when they broach this topic. Well, you were, were very courageous and this is inspirational. And it, it also highlights, I think, the importance of having some type of a support group, no matter what type Absolutely. of an issue that you're going through. Um, before I go to Hannah, what advice would you give to someone who may be in a similar situation? Um, it's kind of simple advice, Decepting, deceptively simple, I would say. But my immediate answer is talk because that it's terrifying to talk. It's 
often the worst to talk because it's so you feel your chest close up but nothing gets done unless you talk and everything you see around you has been started from someone saying what they thought we we agree with that we really believe in the power of storytelling because it validates yours and somebody else's feelings you know to the point where i think it gives them confidence and almost permission to open up so thank you for sharing that um, I'd like to turn to um, Hannah now with the same question um, about, you know, the medical issues that you faced growing up and um, what that really taught you and how that inspired you um, to, to build the app that you have now and to help others. Of course. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I have a chronic illness called POTS. Um, it stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And essentially, it just causes me to pass out or faint. Um, and because of that, I was bullied in school really badly. Um, I was harassed. I was sexually threatened by guys in my engineering class who found out that I passed out. Um, it was just a really bad experience overall. And because of this, it caused me to spiral really deeply um, into depression and anxiety. You know, I struggled with eating disorders, self-harm. And so one night, I had a suicide attempt, and my mom saved my life really in the middle of that attempt um, is what caused me to create this app because I wanted to take action steps so that I would never have to feel as bad as I did that night. Um, and not only for me, but I do it for so many other kids out there who feel exactly like how I did. They feel helpless um, and completely hopeless. So I want to show them that there is hope out there and that there are so many ways to get help. and I hope that the app that my brother and I created can be one of them. I'm, I'm really sorry that you had to go through that, um, but I'm, I'm glad to hear that your family was there to support you. You had your brother and your mom, and that's really so important. Um, could you also um, share some advice to somebody who may be experiencing a similar situation? What type of advice would you give them? Of course. Um, Honestly, my advice is really similar to what Allison said earlier. I think she was completely spot on with it. Just reach out. Um, your friends, your family, those closest to you, um, they're there to help you and support you. Um, so just reach out and ask for help because you can't get the help that you need unless you ask for it. You know, we, we agree with you at Born This Way Foundation. Um, we also know from our research that young people would generally turn to a peer when they're in time of crisis. And I know how important peer support is to you and your brother, and also how uh, committed you are to programs like mental health first aid. Uh, you know, we've adopted a, a teen version of that called Teen Mental Health First Aid. Uh, and what it does is it helps a young person respond and recognize to somebody in a crisis. It's this step-by-step -step program where you learn how to, to recognize uh, a mental health condition, ask the right questions, and get an adult involved. So um, I, I love that you're focused on courses like that and also peer-to-peer -peer support. So thank you very much um, for that. Um, I'd like to turn now to Charlie and to Max. Uh, a question for both of you. You have both founded or helped co-found uh, organizations that aim at supporting someone else. And I would love it if you could speak to what inspired you to do this um, and give some advice to other young people that might be feeling a similar calling. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Charlie. You guys probably already know that. Hi, but <laughs> what really inspired me to help create the Not Okay app was watching Hannah go through all of her struggles and then me struggling by myself and not being able to talk about it because especially in the black community we can't we don't really talk about mental illness which is like that in a lot of minority communities we don't talk about mental illness because yes. we can't be weak i've been struggling with intense panic attacks where i couldn't move for hours my entire life and i was just able to get the help that i need last year because i was actually able to talk about it and then we had the information about it 
informing people about mental illness actually allows them to reach out for help because mental illness normally inhibits your ability to ask for help. Absolutely. Now, now you had a background in technology, so it might have been clearer to you like where to start. But if somebody's unsure about where to start or how to start with an idea they have, do you have any recommendations for them? My one recommendation is just do it. Like it's, it looks like a really big task at first, but the internet is a wonderful place. That's how I taught myself how to create apps when I was like seven, because I was bored. I really didn't want to do the summer workbooks that my mom made me do like, you know, you know, but yeah. like, <laughs> just do it. If you don't do it, no one else will. No one can read your mind and steal your ideas. If you don't do it, no one else will. And I also say that with asking for help, like Allison and Hannah have said, because again, no one can read your mind, just ask for help. Well, thank you. Um, um, Mac, same question for you. What, you know, can you speak to your inspiration uh, for founding or co-founding an organization and also maybe some ideas for somebody who's uncertain of, of how to get started? Um, yeah, so, uh... I helped to run a summer scholarship um, fundraiser for my school. And I would say that ever since I was very young, I was very passionate about community service. I was always the kid getting up in class and helping like the teacher clean up and stuff like that. So um, it really was since the beginning that I really enjoyed helping other people or people um, less fortunate than me or helping a good cause. So. Uh, in order to, I think, gain some form of experience and learn how to become a leader and learn how to become someone that can inspire people to help you reach a common goal, you really need to inquire about other people's experiences. You need to under try to understand what they are going through and how they perceive the world that they live in. So then you can create a mutual goal that you can help to succeed in. So, for example, um, um, my the summer scholarship program is named after a teacher who uh, a college counselor who unfortunately died of cancer a few years ago, and um, her and my mother started to uh, plan this summer scholarship program where students can get funds for summer programs so that they can go wherever they want and they have they obviously have to apply for it, but it's trying to make it's so that everyone can have a amazing and educational summer experience, not just the few that can afford it. Uh, so once she got involved with this, unfortunately, the college counselor that was in partnership with my mother uh, died of cancer before being able to see it to fruition. And so my mother and the uh, one of the college counselor's best friends put together the entire scholarship and it is now um, something that many of our students at Le Mans continue to apply for and really I think it really benefits them and so um, it's quite a nice story to hear when um, the her name was Sarah the college counselor who unfortunately passed away uh, her parents had created a way in which she could sell all of that stuff called Sarah's Closet. And so it was selling all of her old clothes and they donated all the money from that to a uh, to the scholarship program and then uh, came to the school saying we should do a fundraiser and said that to my mom. She was like, yes. And then asked me if I'd like to help to organize it and asked me if I would like to sit on um, the sort of panel of teachers and students and parents uh, as well as with Sarah's parents to help organize it. And I think that one of the main things in getting students to be able to help with something really allows you to take what they know, take what they are seeing and what they are living through and implement it into whatever organization or whatever event you are planning and try and make it look achievable, look like something they want to enjoy as well. well that, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss of Sarah, the counselor, but 
um, I imagine she would be extremely proud to see this work continue um, and also be successful. And, you know, you said something interesting. You talked about like not everybody reacting the same way to situations and how it's important to understand where they're coming from. That's so true, isn't it? Sorry, so, I mean, we're, yeah, we're all so different. And like the way you might respond to a situation is very different than the way you know, I might respond or Hannah or Charlie might respond because of the way we view things and the way that we're, we're built. Yeah, I think definitely that plays a huge role. And I think that especially adults that don't understand that seem mm -hmm. to always be pushing away the ch their kids that do. And I think that as youth, as teenagers, as being the next generation that will um eventually hopefully take over but um as being the next generation that's coming up i think that it's incredibly important that all of us living in a society that is constantly evolving and evolving at a very rapid pace we need to continually be asking different people different questions about their experiences in hope of getting some form of understanding of what other people's lives are and realizing that the world world does not in fact revolve around us right right and do you have any advice for young people that might have a similar calling that you did um i would definitely say if you want to if you are not uh confident in your leadership skills try and get involved with many different things and eventually build yourself up to a leadership position so you feel much more comfortable and in starting something from your an idea to creating something i would say you have find a deeper meaning everything looks nice on the outside as soon as you put a greater meaning and a greater message behind something it becomes a lot more real and an and a lot more valuable and people will be able to see that and people will want to be able to join and want to be able to help you to succeed in creating it. So true. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, I'd like to move on to, to Angela. Uh, what was your inspiration behind Art Bacassi, which I think is such a cool name, such a, such a cool like play on words and what advice would you give um, to others your age that also want to use their platform for change? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, thank you so much for having me, uh, first and foremost. Um, and, you know, just a short, brief introduction. Um, art Advocacy is a, which combines art and advocacy. Uh, it's a youth-led platform shining light on global issues through the creative arts. Uh, as well as through youth curated exhibitions. Um, and our goal is to advocate for the for youth artists and their stories concerning what really matters to them. Uh, and my story, my kind of inspiration um, had to do with uh, a, a lot of factors, I would say both internal and external. Uh, I grow, I live in Los Angeles and uh, which is considered a quote unquote like woke hub, a place where um, a lot of people seem to be aware of certain justice issues. Um, but I've noticed, you know, even in LA, um, I've experienced what a lack of awareness towards those social issues can do internally and externally. Um, internally, I have i don't share this much with a lot of people, but I did grow up with Tarot's um, a mild form um, through a motor tick and uh, that kind of exposure um, dealing with uh, these microaggressions that would um, really plague me throughout um, elementary and middle school uh, that was certainly a challenge and really the first kind of um, I would say factor the first kind of veil that showed Pe you know, people even my age who I considered my friends, who I considered people that I could rely on, um, were uh, they were still not necessarily aware of, you know, how their words can impact someone. Um, and uh, through through exposure, like externally, um, I have experienced racism in my um, immediate community, actually, fairly recently, uh, and and these continued micro microaggressions and 
this really unwillingness to learn about um, taboo issues or learn about politics um, really uh, was the core of what kind of fueled this fire, the fire that um, I know one of my recent, like the recent panelists mentioned. Um, and ultimately, I realized, you know, it wasn't a lack of awareness, but also a lack of empathy, real empathy. Um, and experiences in mental health um, within within school and with and out of school have really shaped me um, in really wanting to uh, show the stories and show what matters for to the youth um, to the world through through things like storytelling um, and where art comes in. Uh, I've been. Our art has always been a safe escape for me. Um, I've been trained in the fine arts for 12 years now, and I know a lot of people do relate. Um, a lot of artists out there <laughs> can relate. Um, it's truly a passion of mine. And I did realize that it was a platform for change. Um, it's Art is a way to express to others um, a lot of different stories, a lot of different issues that many times words can't in the same way. Um, and essentially art advocacy, which combines, you know, this uh, catalyst for change, that being through art, as well as advocating for awareness, um, that was really truly born out of frustration and really gnawing emotions that um, I know affect a lot of people and a lot of their mental health. And ultimately, art advocacy is a space for others. Um, and it's a space for empathy. It's a space for change, and at the same time, it is a space for advocacy through art, um, which is, again, a real catalyst for change. And also, I realized this recently, but art, you know, is a space also for those um, who aren't ready to talk in person. And it is so important, as um, my, like my previous panelists who talked, uh, to talk. Um, and, you know, talking, there's so many different ways of talking, and art is certainly one of them. Art advocacy is undoubtedly a place for everyone, for the youth as well, um, to show that, to really talk in a certain way that may not necessarily be through words, and, but their story is still just as powerful. That's great. Um, <laughs> thank and, thank and, you. I'm sorry. No, did you have something else? Oh, no, 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 I no, just no. wanted to thank oh. you and also mention like art is so healing. Like there are so many. Um, right like therapeutic aspects to it and so many programs that we see that utilize art, you know, as well. So thank you for all of that, that great work. Um, and I, I would like to move on uh, to Mike and now. Um, you have really been a great and an active like ambassador, advocate and resource for your community. Thank you for that. Uh, can you talk about what inspired you initially to be such a vocal leader for your community and also give some advice uh, to young people that might be having similar aspirations. Yeah, so um, when I first started my whole journey into um, kind of just being, I guess a representative for my community, it really started um, in my youth council here. Um, we have a group of young people within the Salt River community who come together and put their minds together to brainstorm how to problem solve and how to create um, specifically positive change in our own community. And when we look at our community, we, we know the problems firsthand, we know what's going on. And so I think it's really important that we were given this platform to talk about what we wanted to see from our community. And so um, that's kind of where I started. And I was really um, encouraged by our tribal council and I felt heard and um, was given those leadership skills um, in order to kind of start building my way up. And once I got started there, I kind of just kept going. And um, then I moved on to a more of a national platform. I previously served with the National Congress of American Indians Youth Commission. Um, and so getting to advocate for Native youth on a larger scale. But again, um, I think really it came down to feeling like I was empowered. I was in, given those resources. And so I wanted to make sure that other youth um, in Indigenous communities and really just youth around the country felt like they were also empowered and that they had those skills. Um, and so the Center for Native American Youth, they've done a lot of work um, with indigenous youth and um, just youth in general to give them the, that power and give them that um, those skills in order to be change makers in their community. And so um, that's kind of where I got started. And just my drive really has been 
um, really wanting to make a positive change for my community. And so, um, you know, I always come back to my community and I always do the try to do as much work here as I can. But also, really, I just want to make sure that other youth um, have those same skills that I had to learn, um, that they were given them, that they have an opportunity to learn them as well. And what we see is that, um, especially in Indigenous communities, youth are our leaders. They're the ones that are on the ground uh, fighting for change. We know we look at Standing Rock. They were fighting for their water rights. And the youth actually ran from South Dakota, um, or excuse me, they ran from Standing Rock Reservation all the way to the Capitol to deliver a petition. And so we see these youth making these monumental um, steps, taking these monumental challenges, and they just go out there and they, they know what they're fighting for. And a lot of it is grounded in their culture, grounded in um, who they are as people. And that a lot of that comes from learning from your, your parents, your aunties, your uncles, but really when you develop those skills and when you have that empowerment, when you feel like you're heard, um, that's when you just keep fighting. And when you keep fighting, it just kind of gets easier and easier. And eventually, you know, you're able to kind of pick these areas. Like for me, I focus a lot on substance abuse prevention, mental health resources and cultural revitalization. And those are just the passion, the areas that I'm really, really passionate about because everything's intertwined and it really comes down to um, focusing back on our, our cultural ways in order to empower each other. Um, but also, you know, having that empowerment comes from being able to speak and um, being able to feel like we're being heard. And, and so that's kind of where I got my start. It really does. Thank you so much for that. You know, and we're, we're seeing very similar things, you know, this generation, when they see something that that's wrong, uh, when they see something that could be done better, they're they're standing up, they're speaking out, they're taking matters into their own hands. I, I think for the most part in a very, very wise way. So, and we're hearing some of those stories now, which is wonderful. Um, before I ask kind of a final question, I want you all to know there's great engagement online. Uh, people saying bravo to these impressive activists, beautifully said, thank you for sharing, like thank you for the advice, you're so young but already so inspiring. So we're just getting really, really wonderful feedback um, and thank you. So now I'd like to really invite each and every one of you to, um, to recommend resources that you might turn to um, for enacting change uh, within your communities. And it could be anything really, it could be about how to volunteer, how to start a foundation, how to fundraise. Um, let's start with uh, Hannah and Charlie. Hi again. So Hi. Um, our Nautica app is always a free resource that everyone can use. Um, it's available on both the App Store and the Google Play Store. Download it. Give us a five star rating, please. <laughs> um, also, we know that like um, there are lots of local warm lines that you can use. You want to tell me what a local warm line is? Um, so there are there are so many local warm lines. They're basically just hotlines, but for but for mental health resources and their text and call 24 seven all day. It's awesome. They're one of our greatest resources that we use here at Not Okay. Yep. And there are so many mental health organizations out there with um, amazing resources like the Born This Way Foundation. NAMI, um, yeah. Mental Health America, the Wonderful. American Association of Suicidology. They're yeah. all amazing. All great. Thank you. Allison. Howdy, it always takes me a second to unmute. Um, on my end, largely for mental health and LGBT basing, the best thing you can do to support uh, LGBT youth and people struggling with mental health uh, is just to listen, honestly. it's I don't have a grand speech about like, here is where you must go for your resources, but you just, these people need to speak and they need someone to listen and to echo what they're saying. Because a lot of the time they don't have the platform they need to spread their message. So it means the world, uh, the first connection is the road to a million new ones. Just listening and being active in that listening is incredibly useful for that. And for on the uh, side of the advocate themselves, again, just talk. Use any opportunity you can. Thank you. And Max, are there any resources that you have seen be particularly helpful? 
Um, I think like Hannah and Charlie said, a lot of the hotlines and the organizations that they mentioned, like the, um, like many of the hotlines, I know that they are incredibly supportive and especially from someone that is trying to be an advocate and wants to start something, I would say, look in your local communities, look in your um, small, look at the small groups of people, look at the people that surround you and find a way that you can help them because eventually helping them will allow you to help so many other people. And also don't um, forget about the great power that is social media, that we all have such an amazing and such a large voice on all of these different platforms that I feel that although yes, there can be a lot of toxicity, I think that the good can really overpower the negativity that is spread online. Yeah. And so don't underestimate it. Thank you. Uh, Mike, I have a question for you. In addition to maybe resources that you're finding helpful, um, I, th I really still think there's so much hope, but let's say somebody wants to help a friend that's having a mental health crisis, but doesn't really know where to start. How how could somebody bring about a conversation with a friend? So, um, yeah, you know, there's plenty of resources out there. And really, I think it comes down to um, there's a couple of different different programs where you can be like a safe talk counselor uh, trained. So it's like a peer to peer uh, resource. You learn how to kind of handle, um, you know, if somebody does approach you and say, hey, I'm having some problems with my mental health, you kind of learn how to guide them without um, you know, venturing into that whole, like having to get yourself like trained as a counselor, et cetera. Um, but there's plenty of different options. And really, I think it does come back to kind of what everybody's saying is um, just listen, having somebody there to listen to you. A lot of times I feel like you sometimes feel like they don't have anyone that's willing to listen. Nobody cares. And so I always tell, you know, anybody that works with youth, anybody that has interactions with youth, make sure that you are able to just listen. You don't have to get feedback. You don't have to give them advice. You can just be there to listen to them. And honestly, that makes a huge difference. And um, when we're talking about resources in terms of how do people get started being an advocate or an activist, um, I really advise youth that I talk to to find their purpose, find that grounding principle that drives you. And for me, it's wanting to make a change in my community. And so that drives everything that I do. And so because we know, you know, all of us here on this panel, we know that it's not easy to kind of take this advocate route and the days sometimes get hard and, you know, we struggle with our own mental health and we struggle with our own problems in our daily lives. And really when the times get really, really tough, I always go back to my purpose and what is my purpose? It's to make a change for my community, to make a better life for our future. And so even though I might be having a really tough day, I can go back to that and I find um, comfort and peace in knowing that. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing this to make an impact. And so I think that it's really important that we hold on to that driving purpose because it really does make it easier. And it, it really helps when, you know, we're trying to encourage others. I can share my purpose with everybody else and I hope that inspires them. But really, I think our greatest resources within, our, within ourselves and then turning to also our community. You know, that's a great ending note. Um, I wish we didn't have to wrap. I could continue talking to, to you for, for so long, but I wanna thank each and every one of you for taking time for this conversation today. I'm so proud of each and every one of you and the accomplishments that you have made. And I know that this conversation will be an inspiration uh, to so many as we continue to build a kinder and a braver world together. Um, for any of you that need additional assistance or want to connect with us, you could visit bornthisway.foundation. Uh, thank you again for being with us. And until the next uh, tea with Mrs. G, we're saying goodbye and be kind, be brave, uh, stay safe and healthy, and we love you all. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.